Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another Football Transfer Forum. We're in April already. The year is just disappearing, and so much has happened since we last saw each other as well. We're out of a version of the lockdown. Uh, we're able to, to do things that we've not been able to do for such a long time, Tony. Hopefully, be back in grounds before the end of the year as well. But the football landscape, it continuously looks to change. There's so much to talk about. The potential uh, ridding of financial fair play. We've had all the agents' fees uh, distributed and published yesterday. I saw uh, the public losing their mind at some of their numbers uh, uh, on, the, on various social media last night. Um, and, and things just, uh, we're in a constant change of flux and change, aren't we, Tony? So morning, Tony. How are you? Yeah, morning, Ryan. Yeah, I'm good. I mean, the, the weather and the AstraZeneca vaccine, you know, it's been a real uh, shot in the arm for me. Oh, well, it's, no, it's not good, is it? It's not good. It's oh, not good. It's a bad but, start. But seriously, you know, one of the things I did want to mention was the, the takeover at Wigan going through. You know, we had Chris Brass on here almost after it all happened last set sort of season and it was it wasn't you know it wasn't wasn't great for anybody at the club now they've been the takeover's gone through there's a couple of people tom markham who was one of our guest speakers at leeds united he's part of it and mal brannigan as well who's always who always comes on the webinars he's part of the the new board so we wish uh, wigan all the best of luck but i'm i'm really looking forward to today ryan because it's a loan managers special. Loan managers probably did did not exist about four or five years ago. Maybe you know it's a new thing. We're on the cusp of it, and we've got some great people on today to talk about it. Fantastic. A uh, bit of housekeeping, guys. If you've got any questions, please put it in the Q and A box rather than the chat box. Just makes. Uh, the management of that much, much um, easier. And also feel free to share your LinkedIn details or any other details, um, uh, email addresses or anything like that that you feel comfortable doing so <coughs> in, in the chat box as well. We've got some good numbers on the webinar this morning. So lots of interesting people uh, to, to connect with. I'll quickly share with you uh, what it is that we're going to go through today. So I'll, let me just share my screen very, very quickly. Tony says we've got um, uh, some excellent guests uh, this morning. Um, so we're going to have a bit of a sort of brief overview um, of the loan manager uh, landscape, if you like, from Guy very, very shortly. Um, we're really privileged to be being joined by Les Parry, elite, man elite performance manager at, at Manchester United as well um, this morning. So Les and Guy are going to have a chat this morning, a discussion uh, about, about loan managers, about that about that function, about loans. Um, and I know that that's going to be really, really interesting. Uh, we're really delighted as well to be being joined by uh, Julian Dow from Football for Football. Um, it's going to be great to hear from Julian uh, in terms of what Football for Football is up to and also some of their content that they've got specifically around this subject um, of, of loans. Um, and then finally, um, we've got Martin Phil uh, Filson, um, from uh, the agency Stella with us uh, uh, again. Martin's contributed into the Football Transfer Forum uh, previously, has always been absolutely excellent. 
Um, uh, and uh, uh, Martin's going to be picking up and feeding back from what he hears uh, from uh, from Guy um, and Les, and it's going to be really, really interesting uh, to hear from, from him on his take on loans as well. And then there'll be a panel discussion uh, at the end of the webinar, um, uh, and obviously a chance for us to answer all your questions as well. Um, so um, I will hand over now uh, to Guy. Morning all, thanks for coming on. Uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks, thanks, obviously, Ryan and the guys for asking me to do a loans manager special. I think it's very important we uh, start to understand the different jobs that are involved in the loans management and also the different titles that are out there, but actually um, amalgamate into the loan role and the loan management role. Les has joined me. I've, I've met Les over the years. Fantastic guy. He's coming on. He's going to be talking about Manchester United's different titles, but obviously loan management still. And I'm going to be going through a short, brief understanding of where loan managers are uh, in different clubs in the Premier League, but also how it looks for me and the different, I would say, departments that it over, overlaps with over the course of the uh, loan week, month, season. So let me get started and share my screen. So I've gone through the, you should see that now, is that right, everybody? Oh, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's great. That's great. So right. I've gone and uh, looked at the current table, obviously, and worked <laughs> off the current table, but we have loan performance meetings probably three times a year, four times a year, uh, depending on, obviously, the pandemic, where she go and meet in various different locations around the country, discuss the ins and outs of the loans via the performance manager of the Premier League. Um, obviously, as you can see, the, the table on the left, but also on the right, uh, is the names of the loans managers or various different titles they have, but they usually concentrate on the loans within their football club. Uh, a few stand out names from me. Go on, Tony. And, and Guy, Adam Henshaw who just got the job a couple of days ago, didn't he, at Aston Villa? So you've done well to include him on that. On that. Well, as, like I said to you this morning, I've been on it all morning, making sure I nailed the information so no one picked me up on it. Well done, mate. Well done. No, no. I just spot, appreciate that. Absolutely spot on. If, if people want to take a, a screen grab of that, that, I think that's a really useful thing to know. Yeah, and it, look, it's, again, some of the guys have got different titles. Some of the guys have... Uh, uh, have you know, moved up. I mean, Julian Ward's moved up now to assistant technical director at Liverpool Football Club, but he's always on the meetings. He's always within the performance management um, with the Premier League. So there's loads of different things. And Danny Butterfield, a good friend of mine, has recently just got the job at Southampton. So he's gone in there after being an assistant manager with uh, Paul Tisdale, wherever he's gone, exit off Macclesfield and, and nearly joined him at Bristol Rovers recently. David Weir at Brighton, is heavily involved with, obviously, Dan Ashworth, who comes on the show. He's been around uh, the transfer form a lot of times and, and a huge influence on a lot of uh, the new modern way of thinking within football clubs and how the structure's set out. Going into uh, the, the role, and again, you can, you know, screenshot these, particularly, you know, the, the role of the, I would say, loan manager. It, for me, it bounces into various different departments, uh, but also various different facets of it and, there's loads of different things within a loan manager role briefly that I look to myself personally. I look to coach in the top right hand corner with the lads. I'd look to speak to them in a, in a way that gets a, a certain intensity into the game. I think that a lot of the loan managers want to speak to them about football, but also, you know, understand them as people. So there's a lot of uh, empathy in there and understand them as players in the bottom left. Uh, I do a lot of administration. I do a lot of reporting back um, filing E triple P drop box, and I do a lot of various different analytical data for for the players and for the staff. Going through the clips, breaking down the clips, making short videos. We talk about the videos on a regular basis because of obviously the pandemic at the minute. And sometimes, you know, I, I end up being their agents. You know, deciding on moves with them, understanding what the move might look like, understanding what the exit strategy might be for the football club, and and trying to work out where these lads might go in the future in the future pathways. Our, um, our cycle at the football club, Leicester City Football Club, looks a bit like this. I mean, we identify and categorise players. We work on the data that's given to us by the various different staff members, but also the data we've collected on their styles of play, the club styles of play, the players' styles of play. And we identify club styles of play so they can fit into a, into a similarity to what, obviously, the, the main man wants, the gaffer. And hopefully they can get into, I think, a, a level where they're 
come back in and around that first team group, depending on age and obviously playing style. And, and, and again, um, if the player fits within the football club's future, um, does he fit within the club? You know, we, we make sure that if the loan's available, and we, we'll go into this later about how many loans are actually out there for players at certain times, is the loan the right loan for the lad at the time? Um, we'll discuss, you know, in meetings and, and probably three or four meetings before the lad even has a, a chance to understand the loan. And we discuss if it's at a level where we can take it further. And we want to make sure that the lad's involved in the process, but we also want to make sure that the loan's actually concrete before it happens, before we start mentioning it to, to players and getting their, their heads turned and not concentrating on what they should be doing at the football club. Because predominantly the football club is the, the most important thing with the lads heavily involved in that decision. Um, professional development experience, what they're going to get out of it. You know, not all loans are game time. Not all game, uh, not all game time is, you know, 90 minutes of, of game time is important. It might be a 45 over the course of the month and then, and then a 60, then a 90. So we have to organise that within the lads' um, mental side and getting to understand what the picture might look like. That's me sharing finished. I will stop that share there. And now I'll introduce a good friend of mine. We've um, crossed paths over the years. He shouted at me on the sidelines a few times with Shrapnel. Uh, he's also gone and had a, a great career as a, as, a, as a man in football. Um, very well respected within the football circles. And it's great to have him on, I'll be honest with you. When, when uh, Tony asked me and Ryan asked me to be uh, the panellist and obviously be involved with this, I was very thankful. But to get guys on like, like Tony and the guys that are here today, it's really good for me because it shows how solid this this group of football family is. It's a, a really good thing. And Les, thanks for coming on, mate. It's, it's you want to introduce yourself, um, what you're doing currently, but also what you've done in the past and wh where it's got you to this this great level that you're at at the minute. Yeah, thanks for the invite and uh, good morning to everybody. Um, yeah, I didn't have to think twice about coming on because um, we both know that as you mentioned before, that the role of loans manager and not just a loan or old manager, but the the effectiveness of, of using loans in the development of players is is becoming more and more important every year. Um, as you say, years ago, the lads used to go out on loan. Somebody'd come on the phone, yet I've got somebody, boot them out the door, say you're going there. They didn't have a say. You never spoke to them for three months, whatever it was. Um, and then he came back at some point and that's how a loan worked. And as we both know, it's it's changed massively now. Uh, and we've all got, you know, in most clubs, it's a department uh, with, with departmental staff, with an analyst, with some clubs have, have a physio attached, some clubs have uh, a strength and conditioning staff attached. We, we, don't happen to have those, but but we do have a, a couple of staff that's working on on the loans and and it's getting bigger. So so I'm delighted to come and talk about it and and just see what people think as well. With your title, yours is the obviously elite performance manager, mm -hmm. and with your background, with being a physio, you know, a manager, coach, you know, mentor, all them different things you've done in the in the past. Where do you see your typical week going? Is it more down the mentoring or the coaching or is it across to, you know, the actual analytical side or the uh, mentoring side? Where do you see your typical day week going in, in the week as a performance manager? Yeah, it's, I, I was brought into Man United by Brian Little. Um, eh, Brian Little. I was just talking about Brian Little before. Brian McClare, sorry. And, um, and he wanted me to come in and sort of get the, Get the, the medical side, the coaching side and the sports science side working together. And I did that for, for a, a few years. I've been, a, for, for those who don't know, I've been at Man United for, for over eight years now. Um, and, and that's where the sort of the title comes from. And they've just never, although, you know, my role at the moment is 95% loans. I do get involved in other things. I help set the women's team up. Uh, I get involved in looking for partner clubs and stuff like that. But 95% of me, so although my me, me title doesn't say loans manager, that's 
if I had to have a title that reflected what I did, that would be it. And when I first started doing it, I was like you to being guy. I was a one man band. Uh, we had uh, we had uh, Cameron Borthwick Jackson at Wolves, um, and we didn't have a member of staff to go and see him, so I took it on myself to go and see him. And then he went to Leeds, and I did the same. And it's sort of grown and grown. So all those titles, all those roles that you've just been talking about, uh, it used to be all of them. So I used to analyse all the games. I used to go to all uh, the number of matches I could. I used to, you know, be the shoulder to cry on, the agent that you're talking about, the psychologist. Um, but as I was then given an analyst, so I have a full-time analyst that, that works with me, and uh, I've been given... Uh, Another member of staff to go and watch. Uh, watch You're a lucky man. I know, yeah. Um, no staff, no staff for me, unfortunately. When yeah. you, uh, when, when, obviously the size of Manchester United and the size of Leicester, we we loan minimal, and, and you're not massive loaners of players, which, which no. isn't uh, for the size. We know that, and uh, the Chelsea's and obviously the Man City's have loan out a huge amount, but yeah. that's again their their again yeah, their project. Hard, yeah. Yeah, their model. And how, how many players have you had out, say, in this January window in regards from starting from, say, August into the uh, January window to look after uh, we've got, we've with, got with the three four, staff you've got? We've got 14 out at the moment. Um, unfortunately, again, as you know, this season, we've been a little bit unfortunate. Like we've got we've got lads at AC Milan this year and Lazio, and we can't go and watch them. Yeah. We can't go and have a nose around the training ground. Um, you know, very little tour around the San Siro. No, a Bruges. And There's a lovely pub just outside. And it's a lovely always, pub just outside. We always arrange the visit, you know, when they're playing Juventus or something like that. <laughs> oh, but, conveniently. We haven't, we haven't been able to do any of that. So nah. it, it's, that's been a bit disappointing. So although we've got 14, we've got five abroad um, mm -hmm. that we can't do anything with apart from keeping contact with them, make sure everything's okay that way. But we can't go and visit, so we've only got actually got nine that we can go and visit. And the range of of contacts. I mean, we, me and you spoke about. We we speak all the time in regards to different styles of, of contact. And me tapping into your experience has been great for me as a loans manager, but also as a as a young, I would say, uh, straight out of football. Still, you know, trying to learn different understandings of working with players. And you mentioned, you know, you you're still up there with the the technology and trying to work out different ways of connecting with these players so just give us some breakdown of getting hold of these lads when um they're in italy and places yeah. like that what other ways are you trying to engage with these guys i mean we're, we're doing all sorts of things as well and i'll, I'll touch on it once you've mm. said this. yeah we've first of all we contact all the players twice a week so we we contact them after a match and generally before a match so that's every player gets contacted a minimum of twice a week, and that's just by phone, that's just for the chat. Um, we 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 have one of our aims is that players don't forget that they're part of Man United. Um, we don't want anybody uh you know thinking that they're forgotten, they're not part of the, the United family and that. And um, so one of the things we we do for for players that are English or even Scottish based. We have we have return to base days where four times a year we bring all the loan players in on a day when we've got a first team game. We do a bit of testing with them. They speak to our coaching staff. They speak to our psychologists. They speak to me uh, in the afternoon. We have something to eat. And then we go to a game, a first team game, and they give us a box of an evening. And we sit in a box and have a nice meal and, and watch a game. Um, the hardest thing with that is trying to get the lads to dress appropriately because they all come in tatty jeans and all that, and it's supposed to be posh. Um, but the, the ones abroad, we generally, we utilise we utilize Zoom and Teams. Um, we're just moving over f to Teams now on, on uh, at United. So uh, we utilise that as well and, and keep in touch, um, as do our first team coaches with the lads who were in the, in the first team. Um, bubble so that they keep in touch with them as well um, it is difficult we also speak to the, the coaches of the team that they're at on a regular basis and get their feedback as well 
um, and relay some of that to to the players. Um, we've been fortunate this year in that we touch wood that we haven't had any pro. I don't. I'm not too sure what we'd do if we had any significant problems with the, the lads who were abroad, because because we wouldn't be able to get over there and sort it and go and visit and you know try and calm things down. Uh, so up to now we we haven't had any problems like that. So. I just hope in the next six or seven weeks that, that nothing crops up and we've got away with it. With April coming and obviously discussion time starting to happen, I'm getting contacted by agents. I know you yeah. will be, but they're obviously following season. How far now um, within your role are you taking a deal? Are you moving the deal up the chain? Um, my, myself, I pass it straight on to my director of football, uh, leave it for him to finish off the, the, the nitty gritty bits and, I get involved with the lads, understanding where they might be going, what they might look like, the deal, and, and obviously the stuff I'd shown earlier. So where do you get it to a level wise, and, and how far do you take the the agency work of this role? Um, yeah, quite far, probably probably similar to yourself. Um, I, I'll speak I'll speak to the agents, and then speak we and again very quickly we we have we have objectives for the lads who are going out on loan, so the the loan club has got to be able to meet those objectives um, and provide the experience that, that, that we want. Um, so it will be my role to speak to the coaches in the, in the first instance and we'll make a decision, either the under-23 coaches or the, the uh, first-team coaches to speak to Kira McKenna um, about uh, where they're going to go. Once we get an agreement where we'd like them to go, we then then pass it on because the, on the money side, I don't deal with the money side. Um, I'll give an opinion of what a club might be able to afford to play, especially at the lower league clubs. But um, we put it across, they'll come up with something and then we then go back and say, listen, we'd really like this to get done because this is a great opportunity in the development of the player. Um and we have a negotiation with 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 the director of football, John John Mayer, to do, uh, currently, and the financial people, and and hopefully we get it done. To be fair to us, I know other clubs ask for you know quite a high percentage of salary as a contribution. We're very flexible. If if it's a, if it's an ideal opportunity for one of our players. And we see it as an ideal opportunity. Um, our, our finance people are, are really good in um, being flexible and allowing it to happen. We we wouldn't dig our our heels in if we could make a good case for it. With minimising risk, and a lot of that's our job, and looking into yeah. you know information that's available at the time, and all the I would say all the dynamics that go into a loan. What would you perceive, in your opinion, as a, a positive and a negative loan? Uh, how would you break that down to understand it? Even like I mentioned before, it might not necessarily be he's going straight as a start off, but he's going to work his minutes up as he goes along the loan. And there's a lot of positivity in that for the lad who's probably a bit wet behind the ears in regards to the real world and needs a bit of a waking up. And then there's obviously the, the lad who needs 90 minutes every week to get near our first team uh, and our first team group. So how do you see that positive loan and the negative loan? And again, you know, give me as much information as, as you, you, you fair to. Yeah. Um, I think people who, who just look at minutes played are a, a little bit blinkered, uh, especially on first loans and young, even young second loans, maybe not on, on more experienced players. But certainly on first loans, um, we, as as mentioned, we we have uh, we have set objectives for each player, and some of them will be uh, playing objectives set by the coaches, and, and others will be sort of social and welfare objectives, experience objectives, and and we marry the the outcomes against the objectives. Um, and we try to be realistic with the objectives. So, you know, if somebody's going on a first loan, I think a 50%, for instance, a 50% playing rate is is acceptable, is, you know, at that point is is quite a good outcome. So, 
So we wouldn't put that they have to play 80% of the games when it's a, a 19 year old going to a League Two club. Um, you know, we, we, we'd be, you know, we, we'd be a, li a little bit more realistic than that. Um, and then the, the others are, are sort of based on, on feedback from the player and, and the, the, the host club staff as well. So we do, we do a pre-loan review with the player. We do a, a mid-loan review with the player and uh, adjust the objectives. And then we do a post-loan reflection with the player. Somebody that's, it's not me that does that. We use a member of staff that's not connected with the loans at all um, to sit with the player so the player feels a little bit freer to, to say what they actually think. And then, and then we we all sit down and, and have a look, and we I don't we don't say that was a successful loan, that was unsuccessful loan. It's more what can we learn from that? So you know that was yeah that seemed to go quite well. It's good. We you know we're quite happy with that. But still, what can we learn from it? And and the same with uh, if it's if we look at it and think yeah I, I think we could have done a little bit better in, um, in selecting a club for them. Yeah, I think that when we're looking at loans from Leicester's point of view, um, not just, obviously, the terminology can be a bit strong on it, positive and negative. Yeah. Um, but we can learn a hell of a lot from a so-called negative loan in other people's perceptions of it. And I think that if you're looking at every case individually, there's loads of positives you can get from a, a negative loan. Mm -hmm. and, and it isn't being, you know, all fluffy and, you know, uh, wet behind the ears either. It's just having that empathy that the lad might have learned something, not just from game time, living on his own, cooking his own food, or, you know, he might have played all the games but lived negatively, you know, not done enough in, in the um, mixing with the players for his future, for his uh, mm -hmm. dressing room, I would say, uh, resilience and, and the cleverness of, understanding the dressing room is part of one of the lads' journeys and things like that. So fantastic insight into Manchester United and fantastic to have you on, honestly. And any questions to the guys? Yeah. I think it's about time, isn't it, from my end? Yeah, th thanks, Guy. Les, I'd be interested to know, obviously, the, the new structure that's just come in, um, it, it was sort of said in the press that there was no sporting director at Man United. Well, I don't think that was necessarily the case, but... There's a new structure now, and obviously Darren Fletcher has been made a, a technical director. Johnny Murta is the director of football or whatever. How has that affected your 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 role day to day? Um, I'm I'm not quite sure yet, Tony. To be to be quite honest with you, um, I've I've worked with with John Murta right away all the time that I've been at the uh, at the club. Um, I've lost I've lost Nicky Butt. Who was sort of who was my line manager? So there was so especially uh, especially with the the players that were connected with the first team as well. So he would be I would sort of go to him and he would go to the manager. Um, so I've lost that now. I assume I don't know yet that that Darren will pick some of that up. Um, and. It's as you, you, you're quite right. People saying that we've have not had a director of football. All the, all the work's been done at some point by somebody. So yeah. you know the fact that somebody hasn't got it stamped on their head doesn't mean that, <laughs> that, that, that the job isn't the job isn't being done. Um, but it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting for me as well to see to to see if it does sort of affect me anyway. But I don't. I really don't see it affecting me. Uh, at all, if very little, there, there might be that I, I sort of I go through Darren instead of of Nicky, but with the younger uh, ones, it shouldn't make any difference. And and Les, when you know you've got fourteen players out, there's a couple over in different countries. Is there some clubs that you particularly go to regularly? You've got obviously really long relationships with. You know they're going to treat the you know, are these clubs at the front of the queue type of thing? They're going to treat the players well. They're going to get game time. Is is that the case? It's more like we've got a good group of clubs that we already know, or is there room for more clubs to come into that? 
No, we, we, we don't have a we don't have a group of clubs that, that we use habitually. Um, you are positively affected by good experiences. You try not to be too positively affected, just like you try not to be too negatively affected by negative experiences. You know, you can't if if we have you know, a player that goes and has a, a negative experience, he don't enjoy it, he don't play much, he feel as if the things haven't, you know, they've not been treated fairly or something. We have to take a step back from that and, and sort of evaluate it properly. And the same with positive ones. But but they do, they do, you know, if if a manager comes in for a player, um and they've had one in the past. They've treated them well. He, you know, you have a good way with players, and he played them a lot. Um, that's a little bit of homework that we don't have to do um, because because we already know. You know, so it, it it is. It does it it does affect us. It does help. And and look, I'm an agent, and we've got a, a leading agent with Martin on, who's going to speak in the, in the second half of this webinar. How how is your relationship with the agents of the players? You know, do you have that conversation with them as well? Is it going to be, you know, are we looking at a League Two side, or are they helping you to find up opportunities? What's that? What's that look like, Les? We, I have a I have a great relationships with all of the the agents that I deal with. Um, as soon as we know that the players going out, I contact the agent. We have a chat. Um, I make contact if I don't already know them. Um, and we just agree that we will let each other know of any interest in the player um, because it's, it seems stupid, really. We, we both want the same thing for the player. I had a long conversation yesterday about a young player uh, that might be going out next year with, with, with an agent, and he is a young player. Um, and, and yeah, and it was good that we were both speaking about that he may have to go to League One or the conference to get the develop to meet his developmental needs. Um, even though he may in future, well, he will in the future play at a lot higher than that level than that. But it's good to, to when it you know you come to that agreement with the 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 agent that you're both singing from the same hymn book. And then all we have to do then is is manage the players' expectations, because you go to some players and say, "Listen, I've got an opportunity for you in League One or in the Conference," and they say, "Wait, there, I'm a Man United player." <laughs> yeah, it seems That's like a long way down, time. Les, from Man United to the Conference, you know. But yeah. yeah, but I think I think if if you have that negotiation with the player and you explain why you've already sat down with them before. And identified the the developmental needs. So, and you've at that point you've already mentioned that went there to meet. I don't know, being battered, um, you know, having battles, being pinned. Uh, you know, to do that, you may well need to to play at a certain level. So they already know the thoughts there. So it shouldn't it shouldn't really come as a shock when you suddenly say, well. You know what about going to this particular club? And uh, Les, I wanted to ask you, and I'm going to ask Martin the same question um, a little bit later on. Is the loan system, for, especially for young players, more important than ever in their development in respect of um, whether or not the academy system actually reflects first team football um, and anymore? So, do you feel that going out on loan to get first team football? Is is now a sort of critical function in the role to becoming a first team player? No, no, I don't. Uh, I suppose I should say that I do. I have a job that I, that I've got, but no, I don't. I think I think every individual that has got his own pathway. Um, there are some players that don't need the loan simply because they're in the first team setup by the time they're eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. Uh, they're playing football at that level. Um, I think there's, there's, uh, apart from those, yeah, I think there is a, there is a, a, a sort of a developmental need sometimes to play football um, because those on the edge of the first team squad 
um, who aren't quite getting in the first team, um, who are sometimes missing out on 23 football because of it. I think uh, I think they're the ones that that would benefit from your your more elite players. Yeah, and so a follow up question to, to to that is, Man United have been very successful. Um, uh, really sort of ending up trading players and selling players that sometimes have never even made an appearance for for the first team. So as you alluded to that, to go and play for Man United's first team, you need to be one of the world's best best players. Yeah. So how much how much is that in in your thinking of, of looking at a player saying, look, he's not he's never going to play for our first team. How can we build some value into him? If he goes and gets first team appearances, that might contribute to us being able to sell him for a, for a, for a higher price. Is, is is that part of the equation? Um, I'm not too sure that we ever sort of sit down and and put it in those terms. But but ultimately, that that's what you're doing because all that we're doing is we're trying to optimize the the abilities, the potential of the player. Now, when you're optimised the potential of the player, that may mean conference. It mm-hmm. may mean Man United's first team. So, um, so by sort of definition, it will mean to some that the maximising their potential is that they go out and they play some some first team football, and they have a, a sort of a monetary value to us if, if if we sell them. But we don't. That's not our sort of primary aim our primary aim is, is to maximize their potential and let's see where it takes us and 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 les what we've talked about developmental loans here really and, and young players going out into various countries and, and lower down the, the football pyramid what about those players who are surplus to requirement who are senior players you know that the manager doesn't pick for whatever reason what happens with them being loaned out is that something that you do or is that is that part of the role yeah, not really. No, to be honest with you, um, the um, once they get to sort of to that level, so um, you know, they, so the, the likes of uh, Dalot and Chong and Adu, it was still young. Okay, you know, mm. if um, you know, if sort of Sancho goes out on loan or, or, or somebody, uh, that's normally done through the manager, uh, through the agent. Um, and we don't really, uh, we don't really have a role in that. Um, I, I, did, I did want to ask uh, Guy um, and, and you, Les. Um, obviously, we're, we're experiencing the sort of first tranche of changes to to the loan system, and there's future changes that FIFA have, have, have got have got in place as well. That deals mainly with the sort of senior players. Um, but I think you know, Guy, guy to, to you first. When you know we've, t- we've touched on it, we, when we see other clubs with such huge amounts of players um, being loaned out across senior players and youth team players, do you think we need for the, rather restrictions? Do you think we need to look at the, the laws governing loans a- again? And could, could there be could there be improvements and efficiencies made? Yeah, there's always efficiencies and improvements you can make, but I think the system was was always working really well for a lot of. A lot of clubs who did it sensibly, you know, and not trying to make it into a, a money making scheme. We, we're trying to produce players to f- affect our first team, you know, and, and if lads so called fall by the wayside, we provide a, a, an excellent exit strategy for them to go and have a career for themselves. Um, and that's what I think a lot of loan departments trying to achieve going up to the first team and going out the door sort of thing, you know, going out the, the back door. And we make sure that, that if the rules and regs are there, we stick to them and, and, and abide by them. But also clubs have obviously gone out in the past and done uh, what the rules say, you know, and, and, and work, made money out of it. So I think that they've got to look into it in a way of, it's going to be based on the players, based on the, the, the leagues that they work with. And, work efficiently with the clubs to provide pathways for these lads in and out of different clubs. And I think that a lot of the leagues work in um, ways of producing players for valuations like we spoke about. But I also believe that, like you said, that the empathy side of things needs to be discussed and not just shipping lads out for the sake of it. Yeah, uh, Les, would you, would you concur with that? 
or do you or do you see some structural issues with how things are at the moment is there anything that you would change if you were in charge no i agree with everything the guy says the 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 only the only thing we need to be careful with i think is that we do differentiate between younger players uh, with developmental needs and older players that are generally uh, financial deals uh, and getting clubs, getting players out of clubs, and and that um, I don't think we can throw them all in the in the same pot and and just have a blanket number that you are allowed to loan out or in or to one club or whatever. I think it needs to be. I think twenty one seems to be the the cut off, but anyone below yeah. twenty one where you can you can make a point for developmental needs, I, I think the rules should be slightly different. And I think, Ryan, just to give you a bit of information, when we're having them performance meetings with the Premier League, we're literally sitting in the meeting with 25, 30 of us discussing these, these points and, and asking our opinions. And, and then they're taking it back to the Premier League guys and saying, look, these guys think this, these guys think that. Yeah. And where, where do we go from there? So it's fascinating to be in, involved in that, and even in, in the young age I am. And then just, just before we finish, because I know we, we're almost out of time for this section, but it, it's to both of you, Guy and Les. Um, the, is, it, is it the case that um, it's only going to be the Premier League who have loan managers, or do you think the Championship and other leagues will... Obviously, there's more sporting directors coming on stream now. Do you think there's a, a full-time job there in a Championship club or maybe a League One club? Uh, Les, do you want to go first? I, yeah, I, I think there's, yeah, for, especially for the bigger championship clubs, uh, I think finance is always going to be a restraint. So that that that, that, that is one one problem. Um, but I think that I think anyone going out on loan from a League One club deserves the same care and attention. Mm. Uh, and as somebody going out from Manchester United or Leicester, so um, so if they can possibly afford to do it by, even if it's self-funded through contributions towards a lad's salaries, I think these you know if they're sending lads out on loan, I think they've got a moral obligation um, to the lads going out to to make sure that it's done properly. Fantastic, guys. That was really, really interesting. And the level of detail there was really, really um, appreciated. There's lots of questions which we'll come to um, at the end, but it's time to, to move on now and bring in Julian um, from Football for Football. Morning, Julian. Morning, Ryan. How are you doing? Yeah, all, all well. Thank you. All well. Um, so, Julian, a couple of things, really. Obviously, keen to, keen to hear about how Football for Football uh, is uh, progressing. Uh, and as I spoke about at, at the start, um, the content that you've been able to, 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 to gather and, pro and produce um, in, in this area of loans as well. Interesting to hear what you've got for people to go and, and have a look at. Oh, great. Yeah. So it's quite, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you hear some of the standpoints. Every club has a different you know, scenario, has a different objective. Um, football for Football, in the first instance, is a resource. And we wanted to create something that was beyond the you know, the theory, it was more experiential. So it comes direct from the players, it comes direct from coaches, it doesn't come direct from managers. Um, and one of the things that we found going straight into the, you know, the loan scenario was the players that we've dealt with, you know, from all levels, generally, whether it be a League Two right up to Premier League, when they're going out on loan, I don't think they understand the processes that are in play until it's, you know, like you said, until they have that reflection period. And they always feel that they could have, um, approached it, you know, with a a bit more of a, a micro lens that this is a um, an opportunity to develop themselves as opposed to just being shoved, shoved out by the club. And I think Les and you know Guy have been very refreshing in saying that yes, those communication channels are there, those communication channels are clear and apparent. But sometimes when the player is away, I think they don't, you know you know, remember that if they're not getting checked in every single day, they need a reflection point because they do, you know, the players that we've dealt with and speaking, spoken to, they do say it's lonely. They do think they're being pushed out. And then there's other ones who think, yes, this is an opportunity, you know, to go. And they, it was quite interesting. We've had some players who've been at the Premier League clubs and they've gone down to a League One or a League Two. And 
one of the phrases they come out with, he said it was like I was playing a different sport. And, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and well, long, these are... The game that Martin's used to. Uh, well, e- exactly. And uh, they said they don't really appreciate it till they're actually there. And again, you know, wow. a guy was saying, it's not necessarily about minutes on the pitch. It's understanding that dressing room dynamic. It's something that they don't necessarily get all the time within that comfort zone of the club or that familiarity. And, you know, the chances are that they, they will go and play in a different environment one day so that if they can't make that transition or really be able to experience or be exposed to a nasty dressing room or a warm dressing room or a manager who likes you, a manager who doesn't like you. Because as we know before, there's players who will go to a club and... You know, it might be a decision that's taken out of the manager's hand. It might be, you know, above him when a player's come in and he needs to be integrated into that scenario. And, and Julian, football for football is a resource that anybody can access. It's free, isn't it? You can you can watch, if you're a player and you're in that position about going on loan, there's, there is there is content that you can get and it will tell you and interviews with, you know, people who've been there, done it and, 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 and what have you. Absolutely, Tony. And, you know, the, the game, whether we like it or not, the, the modern dressing room has changed. These are teammates, but that dialogue of asking up and asking, you know, that for information, players do feel a bit exposed and a bit closed. So they can go into this football for football. Like I said, it's free. And there's players who've been out on loan. There's players who've had successful loans. There's players who've had unsuccessful loans. And they're sharing their experiences. And it, a lot of it is retrospective. I wish I could have, should have. And <laughs> even the managers, you know, you know, I... It was funny enough when you're saying about the financial sort of remits. Um, one of the managers we dealt with, Harry Redknapp, and he was saying he feels if you're a top club and you're sending a player to a lower club, automatically the top club should pay the wages because they're saying you're doing this lad a favour or you're doing the club a favour. And I know the intricacies that are around that, are, that's very idealistic. Yeah. But you can see that clubs, and Martin will say this as regards to players, those players are an asset. And if they're being devalued or devaluing by being in that limbo between the 23s and the first team, that's every window that goes by that they're not playing games, that commodity is reducing. So there probably does need to be a bit more flexibility. And I do see that that transfer, uh, sorry, the loan period, you know, becoming more prominent. Do, do you know what, Julian? And, and I'm probably going to put the cat amongst the pigeons here. But if I'm if I'm an owner of a League One or League Two club, I wouldn't really want to loan players. And I want my players out on the pitch. At their minutes to develop players a vital, you know, if I can put one of our academy 19-year-olds on the pitch in League One or League Two, he has the potential to have a good season, to get games. Why would I want to borrow somebody, you know, borrow a player, develop somebody else's player? Why would I want to do that? Without being, you know, condescending, it probably comes down to the, you know, level of quality. It depends what situation that lower league club's in. If they've got, a, you know, a champion, if they've got a push for promotion or they're trying to stay off relegation, they yeah. wouldn't be in that situation. They'd put that young player in. If they feel that they can go higher up to get a player who could do certain things, technically and tactically, they might not have that experience, but generally this, the, the skill set that the player has will, will level itself out. The experience will come just from being in a new environment. So I hear what you're saying there, but we've had, you know, there's been situations where we've got a player who was in a particular league. His team was battling relegation and he got loaned to a team in the same league going for promotion. And then he, he ended up going up with the team and then eventually signing. So there's a lot of economic sort of intricacies to it and also a lot of, you know, status things as well. Um, J- J- Julian, do you find then um, from the people that you've spoken to that there's a real sort of disparity in terms of the sort of duty of care, the level of detail that comes out of the parent uh, club? You know, I like to think, you know, with, with, with Les and Guy here, we've got an insight into... The, you know the level of the duty of care and um, uh, that they put into it. Do you feel like the sort of the chasm between the, the the good and the indifferent is 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 large from the feedback that you've had? Yeah, the and the, you know Les and Guy will definitely know. Players go out on loan for different reasons, and the ones who have that clear pathway are being communicated to the club. You are going to go out on loan. You're going to do this because we see you as a fixture in our first team. Those players can't wait to get on loan and really test themselves, set themselves, you know, short-term goals and targets. And that pathway is very clear. The ones that are being pushed out or, you know, segued out, yeah, they're going in, they're going in a negative straight away. They 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 think their days are numbered. They 
And it, I, that's probably not the best thing for them because they're going into a secondary dressing room now where they could potentially have a chance to get us, you know, get signed or, you know, put themselves in the shop window. But then they're going in and people are looking at them thinking, I can see why he's out on loan. And then when he gets on loan and he's got not got the right mindset and he's not utilised that situation, I can see why we're not going to take him either. So what we found is if the player is, and the great thing is, as I mentioned, the players, because he's away from the club and it's not a media-based thing and they're realising they're trying to add some value, they are very honest. And they've said, yeah, I've taken a negativity into that situation and it cost me not just my place within the parent club, but it also cost me a move to the club that I was being loaned to. Mm-hmm. Um, really interesting. Uh, Julian, how can people uh, access Football for Football? Uh, you know, wh- where, do, where do they go? How do they sign up? You know, again, it's just, you know, www.footballforfootball.com. I can share a link and like I said, it's free. You know, there are, you know, there's something for all stakeholders. Generally, it is based around, you know, the players, some coaches, but also and the parents as well, because especially these young players who are going into the academy system and are being, you know, loaned out. You know, those parents, because that's the person they will speak to every day. So it's getting the parents to understand that if your child is not going to be playing first team football straight away or is being loaned, it could still be a positive because the club are trying to create a pathway to maximise that development, as Les mentioned. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much, Julian. Please make sure you put that link in the chat so um, uh, everyone uh, can see. And there's a few questions there for you as well, Julian. So stick around. Uh, until a little bit later on. Thank you. Uh, good stuff. Um, now it's time to bring in uh, Martin Filson um, from uh, from Stella. Good morning, Martin. How are you? Morning. Thanks for having me on. Excellent. No problem. Now I, it, this is this is dead easy for me because Martin and I actually managed to get a really good loan whilst <laughs> I was owning uh, Freakley Athletic, and, and and we loaned we loaned a, a young goalkeeper, didn't we, Martin? Of yours, Jake Turner. That's that's now at Newcastle, but has had a, a, another good loan at, at Morecambe. Yeah, we did. Uh, I think Les is looking very excited about my uh, my appearance on here. So uh, <laughs> he's been chuckling away there. <laughs> We've known each other for over 30 years. Uh, yeah, so Jake Jake was when he was at Frickley. It was, again, mm. you know, for me as an agent, I always look at what's best for the boy. And then in conjunction with the club, try and work, as Les and, and Guy have both said. What is the best? It always comes down to the common denominator: is what is the best for the boy. And, and Jake, Jake was one of those. It was his first loan. Uh, I'd, I'd already done similar with Jordan Pickford. Uh, we went down a couple of leagues, but it was about transitioning from that under 18s football to men's football, and uh, and it was a very good loan. I think the most excited I've ever seen his mum was when he was at Frickley and the snow was hammering it down. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Jake, Jake was, she, she FaceTimed me and Jake was shaking in the, uh, in the goals at the top, yeah. at the top of the hill. So, uh, so yeah, it was, uh, it was good. Martin, Martin, it's interesting. Just go through Jordan Pickford's loan because it started quite very, very low, didn't it? Yeah, it was, uh, you know, as an agent, my, my background and, and this is where I knew Les is I, I was coaching at a young age uh, at Tramia. So um, I, tr- I try and put those principles in place. And I, I also played most of my career in non league. So I know the benefits of playing low down. Yeah. Of, of, uh, because when we used to play for some of the clubs and used to play in like a county cup and you played the under 23s, generally we used to steamroll the players because. <laughs> They had things that we didn't have. Is that literally steamrolling them? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Physically, but they, they had most of the lads who you played with in non-league have come from a league club. Yeah. So yeah. most of them technically are good and uh, not as good as the ones you're playing against at the top clubs. But they didn't have the physicality, the the uh, the football nous that experience that some of the other boys had. So I try and put those principles in place, and with Jordan. It was, it was brilliant because um, we had Mark Prado at the club at Sunderland at the time and he was very forthright in, right, he was ready to go out. So his loans went Darlington in the conference, then he went to Alpherton. And again, lots of things come into this. You know where you talk about pastoral care and all, all of those things. Even little things with Jordan, he was at Alpherton and we talked about the travelling how he was getting there, what sort of car he had. You know, when we spoke about, can he, you know, he, he asked me, uh, and we talked about it, can he buy a Q5? 
because of the traveling distances and he was a little bit further up and yeah. it was a bit safer all those things come into play so he went to Alfreton then Graham Kavanagh took him over to Carlisle as manager then Phil Parkinson uh, Bradford, Bradford. Uh, then he went back into Sunderland and, and then he played and the rest is history but yeah. but actually if you look at that he was always on that pathway he never really had any speed humps along the way it seemed like a seamless and in many ways I look at it and, and, and sit back and think, oh, why don't more clubs do this with goalkeepers? Because you can see, you're English. if you look at Nick Pope as well, Nick Pope, if you look at his loans, which are a lot messier, I'm saying the word messier, they're not, because they've got him to where he is. But if you see where he was and how many non-league loans he had, you're going, wow, what a journey he went on as well. Um, Brian, with your with your experience, obviously, of the, the loans with the goalkeepers, what are the positions... Would you necessarily say that uh, uh, applicable for non-league then? Because when I look at non-league and, and being a ex-Premier League young lad, then yeah, going yeah. into non-league, I was very successful myself. You know, I went to Rushton Diamonds, good friend of yours, Jim Rodwell, played with Jim, yeah. and sat there and, and did a good job and got back up the leagues. But found it also very difficult with the the, the non-league mentality when I went back into the non-league when I was older. So. All these different things come into play when we're discussing non-league loans. So it'd be great to understand your points of view with different positions and different player profiles to suit yeah, yeah. a non-league side. I think, I think again, it depends on the side as well, do you know, and what, what it looks and feels like within that club. So I wouldn't say there's any... I, I feel like the non-league sides tend to take more goalkeepers, um, which is a funny thing as well because of trust. Do you know, with goalkeepers and centre-halves, you get better with age. Um, yeah. but, but again, depending on where they're coming from, it, it seems to be that is the positions. So I wouldn't say there's any perfect scenario of that position is more prevalent. It just depends on the fit of the player against the club that you're putting him into as well. And I think that's exactly the same, no matter how far you go down the pyramid. Um, but also refreshing that Les has said that he's had a conversation with a player to go and play non-league, uh, probably probably National League. But a lot of the bigger clubs and also the players see that as a big demotion because I'm at Man United or I'm at uh, uh, Liverpool, wherever it is, that seems to be a big step down for them. The challenge I think everybody has, and I, I, I love the fact that these loan managers are now in place because I think they're a key stakeholder in everything that should be good about developing young players. And it starts from, you know, I've had many problems of one getting loans and then when the lads are out on loan, there's nobody managing them from the club. That has always been down to me. Now with these loan managers, it's fantastic. And if we're developing in the right way uh, and, and the conversations and you know, you've, you've come out with some really good words, communication within clubs is right, then you're always picking what you think is the right loans. And experience, less said, good experience is bad experience, is you, you tend to have them in your mind. Um, and, you know, I've got a lad out on loan now who's at a Premier League club and he's at a Division One club. And, and I know the director of football and I had a relationship with him for a long time. And their philosophy really fitted what he was. He'd done two Division Two loans. He's now in Division One, and it's for me. It's like I'm working with a loan manager who's who's a who's a very good man. Is how do we get him to the to the Premier League for his team? Now mm -hmm. he, he might have to stay at Division One for another year, or in some Championship clubs. And then as a group, I think that's what you decide and how we get them to there because that's what it's about getting them to there. In fact, I think it's getting them to be as best as they can be because not necessarily we know there's a lot of fallouts. So yeah. then if they're not going to be there, I think if we send them out on loan, right, we've ticked the box, he can play at that level, right, what's next? Yeah. And we keep yeah. challenging them, right, what's next? Right, we tick the box. So the worst case scenarios for me always come into play of if he, he if he struggles at Division One or he's that's his level, okay, right, that's your level because I think most of the lads know when they go out on loan, right? Oh, I'm not going to make it there, but this is my, this is where I'm going to be. So mm -hmm. actually, sending them out on loan tells them their own story. As long as you are also 
ensuring you've got this blanket around them where you are caring for the boy. And, and Martin, how active are you? You know, if, if, it, if it becomes obvious and you have the discussion with the coach or the, the coach says to the player or whatever, how, how active are you in, in sourcing them loans? I mean, you know, not every club's got a loan manager. Not everyone's got that luxury. As an agent, how active do you, do you get into the Yeah, club? very active, very, very active. I think it'll change. But again, it depends what the KPI is of the loan manager within the club. So if their, if their KPIs are not to get the loans, but manage the loans and all of those things, everybody's different. So, you know, in our business, we're very active because we have a group of players and we have a group of staff who we speak regular to the clubs uh, about players and those relationships. As I said, Les and I have been friends for a, a long, long time. And you have those relationships and most of our staff do have those relationships as well. So the answer to your question is very, very. Yeah, uh, I want to. Martin, can I just carry on? Yeah, go, go on, go on, Julian, go on. So, Martin, it sounds obviously it sounds like you you know you know your camp, you know your players, and you know the clubs that they're at. Do you ever ever get met with any resilience when you've identified an opportunity for a player that the club might not necessarily have a loan you know department in place, or they you feel look he he needs to move on, he needs to do something? How yeah. is that met? Yeah, I've had it. I've only had it once, uh, a, a Premier League club where I thought the lad was ready to go out on loan, and the head of coaching thought he wasn't ready to go. Um, and he's not my player. He, he's 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 a, he's a, an employee of that football club. So you know, it's down to him. I can have my opinion, but if you have good relationships and they trust you, I th I think and they know you're doing it for the right reasons because it always comes back to the player. What is best for the player? Uh, and that should always, be, I think that should always be your first point of, and, and that should be your base start. Um, but that, I've only had it once. And I wanted to ask Martin, in terms of the stuff that you heard from, from, from Guy and Les and your appreciation of, of, of uh, the standpoint of clubs, is there anything structural that, that you um, sort of have an issue with as, a, as, as an agent? Is there anything that's quite prevalent out of clubs that you think, this is this is this is just wrong. You know, we, we need to do it in a different way. No, I think with the E Triple P, I think the base is there for it. I actually, do you know, I wrote down and never thought about it before. Mm. I think the I think the loan manager should be part of the E Triple P. You have to have that staff, and wow. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't be. If you have a, you know, if you have coaches and you have so many staff that you have to adhere to, well, why shouldn't that loan manager be in the E Triple P? Yeah, because. They are so integral to the development. Look, we're talking about young loans here, but they are so integral integral to the development of that boy. So mm. why shouldn't it be part of the EPPP? Mm. I think, I think in, in my opinion there, Martin, is we are, um, I just don't think there's enough discussion around it. So I, I would say I upload, I would say 99% of my data to the EPPP regarding my players' loans and, and we go through that EPPP data to, you know, see where the minutes are, see how effective it's been, see the reviewing of the data and the information. But the actual EPPP contacting us to have a discussion like the Premier League have recently, uh, you know, for the last probably 18 months of me being in this job two and a half years, is being minimal when you're right. You know, it would be great to have a discussion with the, I suppose, the, the auditors, of the each of them and understand where they're coming from with this loans department. Yeah, mine, mine isn't about whether you're involved in it because I, I expect you to be. Mine is you, you have all these key people. You have to have these to be a cat one. You have to have these people to be a cat two. Yeah. And why not include a loan manager in there as well? You know, I think that would because you are integral and, and in many ways you are probably the the um uh, What's the words I'm looking for? You are the link between them going from, let's say, 23s, 18s to first team football, or, or you're the link to them make sure they're getting a loan so you monetize that player. Uh, and I think it's just so key in a football club now. And, 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 it, and it's in its infancy, and I'm glad that you guys are getting together and discussing it, because I think from that you will get best practice. And the more you talk about it, the better it is. And I think also going forward, it's good that you're including agents in there 
because mm. we all want generally we all want the same thing, which is mm. what is the best for this young player. And I've I, I'm, I'm sitting here saying we have I've had good experiences. I've not always got it right myself, and I've I've made some bad decisions, and I've learned from those things as well. Um, not everything is a good decision, but you learn from it and and you move on. I wanted to ask about the money uh, because you know, there, was, there was a comment and it was really refreshing to hear from Les um, that um, obviously Man United are in a sort of solvent position and so they're able, they're able to put um, uh, the development of the player uh, ahead of a sort of financial requirement. Um, but in terms of your experience, um, M M Martin, how important, even in young loans, even in young loans, how important is the is the money generally to the uh, to the to, to the parent club? I've, uh, most of the time, I would say it, it's not as important because it's most more about the development mm. of the, of the boy. I I think personally, and I, and I and I've talked about this before, and I don't know how it happened. I think there should be a pot of money somewhere yeah. for loans because, especially now, if you look at the financial state of uh, football. With the, not even in the Premier League, but if you look at the lower league clubs, it's a real challenge for them to pay salaries. Yeah. How can you then go if you want to loan a player? Um, it's it's difficult for them to pay the money, especially with some of the salaries uh, in the Premier League at yeah. some of the bigger clubs. How how and you want them to loan? I think that's a real challenge, uh, and and sometimes they that can be difficult. But ultimately, ultimately, the club still bring it back to what is best for the player. Yeah, so, and, and and that's a that's a really good point you make. You know, having sort of been involved in the sort of lower league and, and, and non league, um, you know, talk about off. Oh, we'll contribute fifty percent of the wages, but the problem is, is that you know there might be a young player and he might be on five thousand pound a week. So you know, I can't, I can't. No matter what the fifty percent, what the percentage is, I can't, I can't afford. But yeah, I can't afford I can, the, the, the I can, breakdown. Yeah, I can give you an example. I had a boy at a Premier League club, and he was on fifteen hundred, and he played twenty three for two years, and he starts then dropping off. It, it, it was too good for that. To get him out on loan, there were a couple of Division Two clubs uh, who couldn't afford his salary, but the Premier League club wanted full recover of his salary. Yeah, well, so there was how how there has to be some balance somewhere, and that's where I think. Uh, I don't know how the mechanisms would work, but I think there should be a pot if we're talking about the development of these young players. So it's not always on the parent club um, to keep going, all right, okay, you can have them for nothing, you can have them for nothing. Sometimes I think that's a little bit unfair because I still think if you have to have some mechanisms in place because all of a sudden you might have these lower league clubs who just start sandbagging a load of young players because they're getting them for nothing. And they do need to make a contribution towards it and a commitment. So it's a real juggling act. And this is where the loan managers come in. The loan it's managers. It's got to look, Martin, it's got to look from a recruitment point of view as well. Because you, you can't go in, we can all go and want. I did it with Dembele for Notts County. I did it with Armstrong, your player. I did it with uh, Abrahams at Chelsea. I went and knocked on the door at Chelsea and said, Look, can you come and play for, for Notts County? I got the conversation started with a, what? Do you, you want who, who? Who do you want? And it's got to come from a recruitment point of view. You've got to understand the standard you're in, I think. I think there's an element of, of overshot in what sort of play you can actually get to the football club when you've actually got your own recruitment lads as well that you've spent a lot of money on in the academy that you can use. And I think, you know, using the, uh, the term a pot of money, I think it's it shouldn't be on the, the parent club if the players are being recruited by these lower end clubs to try and get them out of the top clubs, I think they've got to come with some sort of realistic option because like you just nailed it there. You don't want to be fostering loads of players to a lower league club and him not being played. And a lot of clubs go, oh, we've got no money. We can't afford it. We've got, we can't do this. We can't do that. And then they go there and sit and sit and some of them don't even get on the bench. But, but, but also, I would say, Guy, if you actually look at the England team and the England squad, and, and this is where all the stakeholders up for me need to get together, is a lot of those players have played lower leagues. So they've developed there. So actually, if you look at where the players have come in from, they've done those. They've done those steps and they've played in those leagues. So actually, they really do benefit. Um, and especially now in COVID and 
financial implications for a lot for football in general, loans are going to be more difficult um, because of the finances. So yeah, the, the totally good. Totally the agree. It's a, it's a massive juggling act. And again, yeah, the, the, parent club, the parent club is everybody's going to look at that parent club and go, can you help us out more than ever? So, Les, Les what would you think about um, any changes to the, you know, we used to have players used to be able to go out for a, a month. And, and was that a good thing? Because they could then go and see and, and if they, you know, if they fitted in nicely. What, what do you think? Is there any changes that you'd probably think about in the loan market? Yeah, I'd, I, I'm a fan of, of month loans for younger players, for real younger players. One of the banes of our life, and probably guys as well, the biggest bane of our life is manager changes. Yeah, right. So, so we, send a, we send a young player to, to a club in, you know, in July. Um, they don't start too well. Two months later, the manager's down the road. The new manager doesn't want your player. He's stuck there till January. Um, what's that doing to the, the development of a, a, of a young player? Um, so uh, I personally sort of either would like a get-out clause where you're, you're able to cancel a loan yeah. or... Or go back to even you know three month loans or whatever. I mean, I mean, has that ever happened, Les, where a player's gone there and he's obviously a management change or whatever, and you'd rather just have him come back home and train at home, and he wouldn't he be stuck in terms of game time because he's he's registered in a, a different place. But has that ever happened to you, Les? Yeah, it's happened. It's happened quite a few times when you look at the turnover of of managers. You know, there aren't that many teams that go through a whole season without changing a manager. Yeah. Um, and the first thing a new manager wants to do is is look at it, their own players. Um, and yeah, w there has been cases where we've brought a player back to Carrington to train with us in our 23s, yeah. uh, waiting for the window to open. And, and I heard there was um, a Premier League club that would give you, the, the player would be free, he could, as long as he started and was playing games, it yeah. wouldn't cost the club a penny. But if he was on the bench or not in the squad, then the start of a little bit of a financial penalty. Is that something you've heard about? Because I heard one particular club doing that in the Premier League. None of you guys, but... Yeah, I think that's probably used to be quite common. FIFA are trying to clamp down on that at the moment yeah. um, because it's giving you undue leverage on the selection uh, of yeah. another club. Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so FIFA are, are trying to trying to stop that, just like they're trying to stop that you're not allowed to play against your parent club when you're on loan from one Premier League club to another Premier League club, because um, you know if if a if a, a good player can't play against you but can play against somebody else, it's it's probably you know it's not a level playing field. So I think that will be. I think that will be a, a thing of the past uh, before, not, before not long. I think. I think. Sorry. Uh, I think one thing that is is uh, is important is when you send a lad out on loan, you've also got to realise that there's a manager's job on the line as well, and we know how volatile that is. And the thing that you're talking about, Tony, is if you put those penalties in, if a lad, if a young lad goes on loan and he's struggling, so they yeah. do give him. What do they do then? And 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 and, and Guy and, and Les probably they struggle more with this because uh, as Premier League clubs out the window, you can't move lower down. You can, mm. so it's it's tougher for them. But what happens if that happens? The the manager's going well. He's not good enough. Um, I'm just going to sit him on there. But actually, our costs are going up. So. Uh, it, it's somebody's job on the line and you've got to, it's not just about the development or your player, you're picking, these, this is why these loan managers are so critical, you're picking teams that potentially suit your style of play for your individual player to go to and develop and you're choosing wisely. So I think I think Guy will agree with me on this, that um, th this is where the most of our work is done. One, us identifying the right club, but also making sure that the host club has done their homework yeah. as well and knows the player and knows and knows the 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 expectations. At the same time, 
Guy and I have been in football for quite a long time, and we know that a manager isn't going to keep on playing somebody who isn't putting in a performance. So my personal stand in it, I don't know about Guy, is that, that you know, I, I'd almost insist on the opportunity to show what he can do. After that, it's up to the player. Yeah. If he performs, he'll stay in. I've never known a manager who who doesn't play somebody because they don't like them or because yeah. they don't. They want to win games. And if they don't pick somebody, it's because they think that somebody else that they can pick is, gives them a better chance of winning the, winning the matches. Um, so that's that's why it's so important that, that we, we at least give it a, a fighting chance by picking the right club for the right player. And it's not a science. It, it really isn't. You know, some some loans that you, you look at, uh, you think, oh, that might be a dodgy one, that, and they come out brilliantly. Another, it's like matches made in heaven. Yep. And it, it just doesn't happen for whatever reason. So I'm sure that's the same. Sure, guy feels exactly the same. You know, when we're, we're not daft, we, we, we know that you have to perform to stay in the team. That, 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 that's dead right. And you look at some loans and they've worked well and you just think, repeat that. But it's it, this is the trading of human beings. It's massively in, in, inefficient. One more question before we get into the questions um, from, from everybody listening in. Uh, and, and for me, this is the kind of sort of the elephant in the room a little bit. And it's why I've given thought to Martin's idea um, in the past of, 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 of trying to help clubs. Um, it keeps rearing its head. I saw it was in the news again um, last week, the notion of, of, of B teams. Um, that would be the end of the loan system. You know, if we look at how loans don't happen in, in other countries that operate that, that, that B team system. I think just a word from, um, um, from, from Guy Martin and, and, and Les on, on the value of the current loan system the development of players and how that would be different in a B team uh, environment. So Guy, I'll come to you first. I think you'd necessarily um, get rid of the loan system with the B side. I still think there'll be loans. I think it's a great, great policy to have within a football club and in a, in a league environment. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go down the B side route myself because I believe that every club should have its uh, academy and go down obviously into the A group. So. I also believe that, that the loans is a formidable part and they should pay us more. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Martin? Um, well, I think the loan system has worked. So so why change it? Um, I just think we've doctored it too much and it inhibits sometimes more than it helps. And I'd like to go, as Les said, we go back to those monthly loans or three monthly loans for young players when there's a cut-off point. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I also believe is, you know, I'm, I, uh, Tramme is my club. Uh, and what does that look like for teams like Tramme, you know, in the community? Um, if it's a, if it's a big club's B team, does it lose its identity? Does it lose its uh, type of purpose uh, in the, in that community? So uh, I'm, I'm not for B, but the loan system just needs to be tweaked a little bit. Uh, Les, would uh, a B team scenario be less efficient than the, the the loan system for the development of players? Uh, I've got a I've got a foot in both in both camps really. Um, I see the benefits of it because you have more control over the B team. So the style of football they play, you've got more say over. So you're placing your players into a, into an arena that are going to play a similar style of football, which mm-hmm. is. You know, which is positive, uh, but then are they getting the loan experience? You know, one of the things about Guy mentioned it before about, and and Martin did uh, about people going out and having to live and having to meet a new a new squad, a new teammates. Um, you know, if you've got five, six or seven of of your academy going at the same time and forming little cliques and and things like that, I think. I think it falls down there, but I can see I can see benefits and definitely negatives with with looking at, a, at both sides of it. But at the moment, that the loan system's working well. Ryan, sorry, can I just come very quickly come back? Of in? I, I think also 
to answer some of your questions in a different way is I think it also needs to be looked at of the 16 and 18s and 23s. So that that factors into the uh, B team conundrum. Do you, do you know, Martin? About the old style of A and B teams, which we knew of Central League, which yeah. fan, was fantastic. Yeah. Um, and if you look at some of the clubs now, uh, and I'll, I'll mention Leeds on here, they play their senior boys down uh, and it helps the younger. And a lot of clubs don't do that. Yeah. And, a lot, and I think Guy would say when he was coming through, he was helped by some of the senior boys and we don't have a lot of that. So there's lots of little things rather than go, oh, we need a B team. There's yeah. lots of little things that we, I think could be improved in the system that we have now before we went down that route. And I think if you exhaust everything and it doesn't work, then you could really go, well, B teams might be the answer. Yeah, but Martin, I was just going to, I was just going to make a point really. And it, it leads on from what Ryan said, because, and, and I totally agree with you when you say, you know, you, you Tranmere is your club. It's got its own community, it's its own identity. What about the clubs that are in groups now that have several clubs dotted around the world you know, I think the Pozzos started it with Udinese and Watford and Granada, but now it seems to be the flavour of the month. You look at the Red Bull group, you look at the City football group, those have almost got feeder, you know, how many loans can you do? What what what's, what do the guys think about those, the, the, the group model? Les? I, I, I think, per, again, my own personal view is that it limits your opportunities. The question you, you asked before about do we have special relationships with special clubs? Mm -hmm. and, and that's the reason I said no, is because by doing that, you're limiting the opportunities that you're able to offer to players. Mm -hmm. um, so if you know if you have one other club, let's say, and you want to send it, we used to have a relationship with uh, Royal Antwerp. Yes, so I remember that. To Royal Antwerp. Now, Royal Antwerp was a great opportunity for some of the players that went there and was not such a good opportunity for other players that went there because it wasn't what they needed. Yeah. So, so it's, it's putting a, a set of blinkers on you really. If you, if you just have four or five clubs and you'd only move your own players around within those four to five clubs. Um, to, 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 I'm, really, I'm really, really keen to get some questions in, yeah, sorry, the, yeah. in, the, in the audience. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that now. Um, uh, the first question, um, and I'll put this to, to, to you, Les, is from Matthew. Um, Matthew says, as, uh, he's curious, do you believe players develop um, better abroad or in their birth country in respect to, in respect to a loan? Um, or does it not matter? I'm, yeah, I'm going to go back again to individual needs. Some, some people, some of our younger players, the, the way they play football, the way... The, the stage of physical development that they're at lends itself to them playing in in not such a robust league as our League One or Two. So we might well look at Secunda Liga, uh, may look at one of the Scandinavian uh, countries. So I, I think it is a very, very much so an individual thing. Great stuff. Um, um, we've got Danny Butterfield uh, tuning in today, which is um, uh, great. And he's new to the role, but I'm sure many of you remember Danny from, from when he played. Um, uh, Danny asks, uh, do you agree that you often loan to the manager and, and coach opposed to the, to, to the club? Um, I think that's a really important distinction. Guy, I'll, I'll come to you. Is it, is it more about the relationship with the manager and coach than the, the actual club that you're loaning to? Is that is that really more prevalent? Not, not necessarily. Um, we'll loan to the, it could be the first team, it could be the head coach, it could be, you know, whoever you're speaking to, a head of recruitment, you know, you could be dealing with the head of recruitment and, and he's then put on to the coach um, and he's given the opportunity to go and work with the coach and, and not really have even spoke to the coach. So mm -hmm. there's them discussions to be had. Um, relationships with clubs are there. But obviously, you know, you've got to make sure that it's a, an understanding that fits your club. And again, Les has nailed it, individual needs. Yeah, I mean, Martin, what are your thoughts on, on, on that? Can sometimes you sort of look beyond the situation at the club or what's happened historically at the club if the person that you're actually dealing with is somebody that you trust and know? 
Well, I think based on any business, business, it's trust. So whether it's football or, or, or whether you're selling apples and oranges, it's yeah. it's the same principles. Uh, and, and for somebody like Danny, you'll have a lot of contacts as, as Guy and Les do across the breadth of the country. You're going to probably go towards those people you trust as well. And, and if you have a, if, if you trust those people and they have a good philosophy and it's, Again, it comes down to what's that individual player's needs and can you match that with a club? And yep. what does that look and feel like? And then you'd put all the support mechanisms in place after them. Um, one thing that we've not touched on uh, today, but Jano asks a really good question. I'm interested to come to you, Les, on what you do at United. How important is data um, uh, about a player when you're putting a loan uh, t- t- together? Um, how, how much do you do you look at data of, of, of your player, of the potential club that he's that he's going to? Does it play any role at all? Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, so we look at we look at averages of the receiving club. Uh, we look at posi- position specific expectations. So what? type of fullback does the manager like to have in the team mm. um, and look at the stats that back that up mm. um, we we obviously keep uh, GPS data uh, and performance data on all of our players so you know how many if we're sending uh, Ethan Laird to MK Dons yeah. uh, the people that went before him how many crosses per game were they putting into the box Uh before you know, before they took Ethan, um, and then we have the we we keep an eye on now. We get all of the training data from all the clubs that uh, that that we deal with, and so we keep the 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 players sort of individual uh, footprint up to date. And then I every every month I get a report from our data analyst that shows the performance at the host club against under 23 or our first team uh, averages as well to just compare it, the, same, the same for you guy do you, do you get heavy into the, the the data before a loan happens yeah we, we, before post and obviously when we're reviewing it's it's a huge part of football if you're not on board with it you you're well behind and i think a lot of things that les touched on we do as well and we sit in, you know, meetings before preparing what it looks like as the, the manager with the how many loan players he's used, the minutes that he uses them for, you know, we go deep. So if we don't, again, it, it minimises risk for us and it, and it prepares us for the conversation just before the, the meeting with the, the, the loan manager and it, it prepares us for the meeting with the staff that we're getting uh, ready to, I suppose, pr- project or a pair alone for the staff, the under 23 staff to discuss. Uh, there's a question from Dean. Um, I'll put it to, 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 to you, Les. And he asks, who ultimately, when it really comes down to it, as the final say on the destination um, of, of, of a lone player? Um, and, and does it differ from player to, to, to player um, and from your knowledge of other clubs as well? You know, do, do some loan managers have that autonomy to, to, to make the decision? Or even with the young players, would, 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 Ollie, would Ollie get involved at any point? Um, I certainly don't have that, that authority on my own. I form a part of a, a group. So young players first, we... We have we have coaching staff. We have the head of the academy, myself, and and we'll sit down and and look at clubs. We have to draw up um, some stats that the guys just been talking about on the clubs that may be interested to throw there, and, and then we'll make a decision on the. It's ultimately the manager's decision on anybody who has trained in the first team squad. So it's, all we can do is put the information forward. These clubs are uh, you know, interested. This is the stats on the club. This is the pluses and minuses on the club. Um, we recommend that he goes to X and then we'll get it back. Well, yeah, I understand that. I think Y might be better because of this. Um, uh, Martin, with, with yourself, um, 
you know so, some of the some of the some of the good agents the agents that have got great relationships with with with, with clubs you know people like yourself and obviously you know just going back to the uh, uh the, you know the 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 the, the, the sort of small uh, deal that, that we did you know you you had the autonomy there didn't you you know you you were working with the club and 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 you know you you were driving that forward yeah but at the time they didn't have a loan manager okay. so yeah. it was uh, there were still people behind the scenes who were working on it but again, it was a relationship. I have a good relationship with, with, uh, with that club. Um, but yeah, I think it still just comes back to if if you are doing something for the benefit of the player sure. and you build that relationship, it should never get into a conflict. Because mm. through all the steps, you know, if you're recruiting a player at 16 and you're all on the same page to build, 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 it should never come as a surprise then. Um, okay, um, we've come to the end of today. It always goes, and you know, uh, th th this this loans market on on the front of it, it doesn't seem like a particularly contentious um, or or even detailed area of the game. But I think today's talk has, has shown that it's um, <laughs> all right, uh, right. Yeah. <laughs> anybody anybody can do it. Is that what yeah, you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was getting I was getting to the book. Um, uh, but I think today's chat has shown is that it's massively complex. Um, there are there are big structural things that we need to continue to think um, uh, to think about. And for me, the big three takeaways are that is that the game needs to think about getting back to these shorter loans, these month loans, these three month loans, certainly for, for, for young players, with some more flexibility uh, for the parent club, the get out clauses, I think are absolutely appropriate, absolutely appropriate, certainly if the manager should go as well. And I really do endorse this idea of a fund to help uh, lower league clubs uh, fund these loans. I think that uh, that's a win-win for everybody. That'll keep Guy happy um, <laughs> and uh, they'll be getting, uh, the parent club will be getting more money and, and really uh, address, you know, the, the, the big financial shift and disparity that, that is there with with wages guys i want to thank everybody for their contributions we've had some really good numbers on the webinar today as well and really thank you to everybody listening and your contributions um tony i'll leave the last word to yourself yeah no thanks to, to les uh, guy particularly julian and, and martin you know we've really i think we've really delved deep into this subject area and hopefully it's been i've learned so hopefully you have as well and you know Please join us for our next webinar, which will be the first Thursday in May. Um, it was April Fool's Day today, but there was no stunts, gags, anything. Everything was just straight laced, which I really appreciate. So thanks, fellas. Guys, yeah. thank you, everybody. Enjoy yeah. your bank holiday weekends, everybody. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks, Cheers. Martin, Jules. Yeah. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah, Kai. Take uh, care, mate. Bye -bye. Thanks very much. Take care. Cheers, lads.